Welcome back to the Morning Brew, the Friday version of this show. This is Matt Gentry. Hello. And I'm Larry Ahrens. Thank you, Matt, for doing this this week. We've Absolutely. had fun. It's a good time. We've had a good time. Uh, joining us here at, on the set are, uh, well, let's start with Dominique down here. Dominique Rogers, a 10-year veteran of the Albuquerque Kings wheelchair basketball team. Dominique, good to see you, man. How are you? Hey, guys. Nice to yeah, be here. Yeah, thank you. Also with us today is Ben Shaw, co-founder of the Guild of Ethical Tattooists. Yes, sir. Ben, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And we were discussing tattoos just a moment ago. You have some? Yeah, I have a, I have a few tattoos. And they're, uh, you know what? Believe it or not, as painful as they are, which they are, people say, oh, tattoos aren't painful. I say, you are a liar. Because they so. hurt. They anyway, do. they're addicting. They're very addicting, as I was mentioning of it. Every time someone says, oh, I'm going to get my first tattoo after that, they're returning customers for sure. The phrase really? should be, I'm going to start getting tattoos. What's that? The phrase should be, I'm going to yes. start getting tattoos instead Definitely. of I'm getting a tattoo. Yes. <laughs> uh, tell us about your business, first of all, and how we tie in with the Albuquerque. Sure, Kings. sure. The, the Guild of Ethical Tattooists is an organization created with like-minded individuals in the body modification industry. We go out and we educate kids, we educate the community about the health and safety aspects of tattooing. But that's more of our business side. The other part is the community activism. We like to work together to utilize our artwork for uh, good causes, like doing art fusion, selling uh, off the artwork, and giving all the proceeds to a good cause. So that's where we kind of tie in with the Albuquerque Kings. Uh, we've, we want to uh, join other unique organizations to um, kind of work together to benefit a great cause like the Albuquerque Kings wheelchair basketball team. That's super cool. Cool. Dominique, you're a New Mexico guy, huh? You're a native. Yeah, definitely. Lifer here. Very good. And you've been with the Kings 10 years now, huh? Yeah, since 2004 when we joined up to start an ad adult team and start competing nationwide it was 2004. So people have been strong about 10 years. People don't realize just how aggressive wheelchair basketball is. I mean, it's a very, very, very physical sport. Yeah, most definitely. It's, um, you know, it's a lot of contacts, a lot of, a lot of rigorous training, you know, endurance training. Um, and we train just just as hard as um, any other college team or pro team. Yeah. Um, our our training schedule is three to four days a week, um, all at a high level. Yeah. And, and the competitive nature of this um, wheelchair basketball is all over the country. And are there tournaments and things like that you guys go to? Um, yes, definitely. Um, well, mostly since we're Southwest, we travel mainly in the West Coast right now, like um, Vegas, California, Arizona. And coming up, our first tournament of the season is um, actually in Seattle, Washington, uh, the weekend of December's um, 5th. Are you, what's, what's the reputation of the team? Are you guys a team to be uh, feared and reckoned with? Uh, are well, you guys good well, in um, that way? Definitely, you know, we wouldn't be um, talking about us if we didn't put out a good product. So, um, <laughs> yeah, definitely, we're we're ranked right right around like the top 11 to 12 team in the nation, which is among over 200 teams. So That's awesome. we're right there in the thick of things every year. That's good. very cool. Yeah. Ben, what makes a, a, an ethical tattoo artist? And I have a list that I came up with. <laughs> what makes it? Well, not only just as somebody that wants to do great artwork, but they care about their canvas, exactly. the skin, the person that wears it. So we, we are properly trained. We make sure that we're bloodborne pathogen certified, first aid and CPR certified to make sure it's an ethical, safe practice. About the top 10, according to uh, a website that I found. See if you agree with these, okay? okay. Top 10 uh, points for an ethical tattoo artist. Be nice to your customers. Of course. Obviously. Um, make sure that they're comfortable. Tell your customers about your career. Yeah. Do you tell people about? Definitely, got to keep a good rapport. I mean, it's not just the the tattoo; it's the experience. Yeah. You, know, you want to get to know who's going to be permanently marking you for the rest of your life. Um, how do you? Just take a side note from this. How do you? If somebody asks you, do tattoos hurt? What do you tell them? They do hurt, but it's the environment in which they get tattooed. It makes it a a 
process that you can endure. You know, somebody yeah. can actually take you through it as opposed to just tell you to sit down and shut up and yeah. just get it done. I like that. So number four, show them your studio. Of course. Again, these are top ten uh, mm -hmm. ethical artist bullet points. Give your customers all the healing information, which is super important. Definitely. Uh, I went to another tattoo artist once, and it healed completely differently yeah. than the normally normal guy. I go to Chris Partain, who mm -hmm. is on your That's fantastic artist. board. Always be open for suggestions. Be supportive of design. Mm -hmm. Avoid minors. Definitely, as much as possible. Uh, no alcohol or drugs. You no want to say something about minors? Yeah. Yes, actually. The Guild does go out and educates kids. We've actually been asked to go to local schools, APS and Charter, because there are children as young as 13 and 14 getting tattooed unprofessionally. So we're going and urging them, obviously, to, to wait until adulthood, and then when they do get to that age, to seek out a professional. Awesome. We can definitely avoid minors as much as Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. So now I'll go hard drugs, that's obviously you and or the customers, and be available. Oh, yes. So definitely. there you go. Yeah, those are, those are some good, good points for sure. So how are you guys helping the Albuquerque Kings? Well, I wouldn't say that we're helping the Albuquerque Kings. We're all just working together. So we've combined ourselves with the Duke City Darlins Guardians, Warehouse 508, the Who I Am Foundation, and the Kings to create an event to, to really have a good time and to not just try to raise funds for the Kings, but to raise awareness about them because they're fantastic community heroes. They're going out and they're helping... Uh, youth and individuals who had limitations to overcome those limitations to, to have fun and, and, and engage in a, a really challenging sport. So we're going to be having a fall fiesta next uh, Saturday the 22nd, November 22nd at Warehouse 508 from 12 to 7 p.m. There's going to be live bands. We're going to have demonstrations, some mixed martial arts, some art fusion by the guild, games, prizes, vendors, a whole gambit of stuff to enjoy. And all the proceeds will be going to the Albuquerque uh, Kings wheelchair basketball team. Nice. Yeah. You know, oh. you don't hear a lot about having clowns anymore. That kind of saddens That's, me. Well, they've kind of <laughs> deemed kind of a scary re reputation. Yeah, but I, I do that part time, and business oh. is way down. Okay, well, then come on over and we'll. we'll but I have a niche. I'm, I'm a funeral clown, and okay. I'm not getting a lot of business <laughs> right now. Yeah, that's, that's a good. So, when's the fall fiesta, Ben? <laughs> November 22nd, the Saturday after next. All right. How, are, there, are there tickets? Or yes, we do have pre sale tickets. Okay. We do have a web website, uh, abqkings.org. You can get more information there, as well as our organizations. Um, the, the, the Guild, the, the Darlins, we also have pre-sale tickets as well, or you can buy them at the door. Oh, of course. Dominique, uh, w so you guys practice hard. Where, where do you guys work out? Um, <clears throat> right now, um, Monday, Monday night from 7 to 9 at Grace Church here in Albuquerque. Uh -huh. And then on Saturdays, um, we practice at um, UNM from 11 to 2. And that's one thing. We're always looking for more gym space, so... There's somebody out there that has an open gym during the week that would allow us to come and train. We'd be more than happy to. What, what's your specialty on the team? Are you the shooter? Are you a defensive guy? What? Uh, over the years, I've become somebody that, um, like a utility player that fills in spots and does what the team needs, you know. Cool. Uh, wheelchair basketball, like you say, is, is incredibly physical. Yeah, speed. Um, physicality. Yeah, if you want to see what these guys endure, there's, some, you can, there's a movie called Murderball, which came out in 2005, I believe. It's rugby, yeah. wheelchair rugby. Yeah, wheelchair rugby. Very yeah. similar to what these guys do as yeah. far as the physical contact and the aggressiveness. It's pretty aggressive, too. Yeah. If you guys want to see if you can actually shoot a ball into a hoop from a wheelchair, we'll have that game available. Oh, really? On the 22nd. Let's just see if you can do it. It's a good it. challenge. Oh, yeah. I doubt I can it do really it. Is. Yeah, it. It really is. Yeah, I don't think I can either. Guys, thanks for being here. I'm glad your collaboration is working out. Dominique, best wishes to the Kings yeah, in the upcoming Thank tournament. You. Thank you. For thanks for being me. here. Ben, pleasure to have you on the program as well. Thank you. Anytime. All right. It's the morning brew. We're going to chat with Rosalinda Roman from New Mexico here in a moment. Howie Keibel coming up from Yelp, and we'll have some musical performance for you today as well. All on the show. We'll continue in just a moment.